Hello and welcome to this video about additive manufacturing developments, challenges and trends. My name is François Minek and I am the Managing Director of BSF 3D Printing Solutions. I joined the additive manufacturing world six years ago by creating my company, Manufacturing Powders for SLS. Then I joined BSF 3D Printing Solutions in 2019. This video is meant to give a general introduction about additive mar manufacturing markets, dynamics and trends. It is specially intended for newcomers in additive manufacturing. I will first address the why there is this interest in additive manufacturing and then the challenges and trends in this market. So why all these buzz about 3D printing or better said additive manufacturing since four or five years? First, because this technology has a great potential compared to other traditional manufacturing methods, like for example, injection molding, it requires no mold and can start production of any part immediately. We therefore save time and money. Moreover, it allows for more complex parts and almost complete design freedom. And this design freedom also allows to reduce assemblies by manufacturing more complex part without this assembly step. Also compared to the other methods, which would be a subtractive manufacturing like CNC, you obviously reduce material waste. So you would say with all these arguments, uh, why is additive manufacturing not more widely spread? Because at the end of the day, we should put it in perspective. If you compare, for example, additive manufacturing with totally uh, irrelevant markets like the Avogadro complete market or the Black Friday digital sale or Apple AirPods or the manual toothbrush, for example, or ski equipment, which is for me more important, you see that actually additive manufacturing is not yet a really big thing like if you would compare it with the global manufacturing market, which is 1000 times bigger, 12,000 billions of dollar market. So why, why is this? To understand this, we need to go back a little bit in, in history. And on this um, frame, time frame, you can see that actually additive manufacturing was invented way before the internet. However, as you can see, it didn't get the development of the internet. Uh, with a 10 billion overall business for 3D manufacturing, it's a drop in the ocean compared to the big internet companies. The first in commercial and industrial 3D printers have been introduced in the 80s. And uh, however, at the time, all the technologies were patented and it was making it difficult or impossible for new entrants to come in to make this technology uh, at a lower cost. And it was then a high cost technology reserved mostly for making prototypes. And it is only around the 2014, 2015 that patents started to expire and this expiration of patent made it possible to, new, to have these new entrants. And this is actually the year that you realize that all the general public or industry in general started to hear more about this technology. So now if you put in perspective additive manufacturing compared to standard manufacturing or to more relevant things in general, you see the huge potential this technology has and the huge uh, market is addressing. Uh, if you compare on one side with uh, general manufacturing it's less than 0.1%. And compared to polymer industry, the polymers used in 3D printing are less than 0.2%. So, and therefore this technology is growing. Uh, as you can see on this graph, the growth rate is between 18 and 25%. It depends of which studies and which sources you use, but it's definitely a high growth market. It's expected in 2024 to reach around 35 billion. Why it's growing is thanks to the use in more and more serial application, serial production application, thanks to new technologies and new materials which are making additive manufacturing more affordable, faster, and more reliable. But also thanks to new business models. 
if you take, for example, the dental aligner market, this is a 1 billion uh, industry which grew based on the total market disruption, replacing metal wires by thermoform sheet on 3D printed molds, mostly done with UV resins. So in many cases, the 3D printing will not replace traditional manufacturing methods, but either complement them or participate to disruption of this business model. But of course, it will need an evolution in complete cost of ownership, TCO, total cost of ownership, with better price of material, better price of uh, printers, higher speed of printer, and wider range of materials. So however, the growth of the industry could even be faster. Many studies are identifying the two main bar barriers for a faster adoption. The first one is the cost of the produced part, as I said just before, the TCO, the total cost of ownership, which is a mixture of the cost of the raw material, the cost of the printer, but also the, print, the printing speed. So you can have a printer which is maybe more expensive but much faster at the end it will have a better tco for the part and that's one of the biggest hurdles as you can see on this uh, graph which is saying both cost of material and systems but the next one is the lack of additive manufacturing design know-how indeed after more than 60 years of basically using the same method which is injection molding or extrusion we need to switch the minds and start to design for additive manufacturing. We will detail this in a separate video of the webinar series. But in general, if a part is designed for injection molding, they are likely not to be functioning if you print them, or in a very little percentage will they be working. And then if you do that, you lack the advantages of additive manufacturing, which is the freedom of design to reduce assembly, for example. This is another study uh, made by Sculteo showing basically the same results. So the cost of the material, the cost of machine, so the TCO are the main hurdles. And that's why actually today, additive manufacturing is still today used mostly for prototyping or for production helps, which are called production jigs and fixtures, and still very little in industrial serial productions. But most studies show it. In five years, additive manufacturing will be a mainstream technology for manufacturing of parts. At 4RDM, we are convinced that additive manufacturing will become a mainstream production technology, and we are committed to make it happen. This is why our company goal is to drive additive manufacturing forward. Therefore, our new logo for the end. So although BASF established officially its activities in additive manufacturing in 2017, we count today over 200 specialists developing and manufacturing products and services for all technologies whether it's filament printing, UV resin, or powder bed fusion. We also support our customers in design for additive manufacturing and consult them and support them on their journey to additive manufacturing from ideation to finished product. So what else do we do to contribute to the acceleration of the additive manufacturing market? Well, we do that by developing new products and new type of applications, also by doing acquisitions to get more new technologies. We also have a venture capital arm uh, under BSF who supports companies with new ideas uh, using 3D. And we work together with some um, partner printer manufacturers. And some examples of what we did concretely, for, for example, there were some acquisitions which were done, Innofit 3D in filament, advanced 3D materials for powders, set up for R&D and manufacturing of powders, and more recently, Sculteo for manufacturing of parts. 
mostly to support our end customers to go in serial production of parts. We also work together with some printer manufacturers for big size or fast printing, like Big Web, Essentium, or, Prism, or Prism Lab, where our venture capital invested. But, and more important to us, and which is the core of our work, is we develop products for affordability and for new application. And here are some examples of products which we have introduced in the market, like the PA6LM, which is a PA6 powder, which is uh, processable on low-cost machine with a reasonable price, RG35, which is a UV resin, uh, also affordable, and UDM01, which is a dental mold resin, uh, which we're introducing at affordable price. And uh, a bit before that, we introduced the HP TPU01 for flexible applications, so enhancing and the spectrum of application you can do with 3D printing. And finally, let not, last but not least, we do work with industry partners, for example, Materialize, but also with consortium like IM3D and DMRC. Thank you for your attention. If you have questions, please do not hesitate to send an email to webinar at bss3dprinting.com. You will be able to learn much more in the webinar series and video series we've developed. Stay tuned.